Mark Rogers, TV, talking college football and the University of Virginia's decision to retain head coach Mike London at least through one more year. Now, the contract for London runs through the 2016 season and had the university decided to let London go, they would have been in it for close to $6 million with the buyout plus the last two years of his contract at $2.3 million per year. Let's size up the Mike London era at Virginia as it stands right now. Coming off a 2-10 season in 2013, have the Cavaliers turned it around? Well, to a certain degree, yes. They are 5-6 and six heading into the arch rifle game against Virginia Tech. They have not defeated the Hokies in 10 consecutive seasons. So they are pretty much a pick em in terms of a pick em game. They do have to go on the road to take on the Hokies. Uh, Virginia's a three-point underdog. Vegas, of course, gives three points to the home team. So this is pretty much a toss-up with two teams trying to become bowl eligible. Mike London, okay, 23-37 and 37 since 2010, 11-28 in a fairly weak ACC. Okay, if you compare that to Al Groh's status and his tenure at Virginia, uh, where he was the coach from 2001 to 2009, his last five years, comparing those five years to London's five years. Well, Al Groh's six wins better. He is uh, seven wins in the ACC better. So Al Groh at 29 and 31 in five years, those last five years of his stay at Charlottesville. Again, London 23 and 37, 11 and 28 in the ACC is horrible. Uh, Al Groh, 18 and 22 in the ACC. And again, Mike London has continued that stretch of consecutive losses to Virginia Tech. Now, to Al Groh's defense, Al Groh was taking on a much more difficult Virginia Tech team to deal with. He was taking on top 10, top 15 teams coming out of Blacksburg. Not so much for Mike London. Uh, this team, it's 5 and 6. Uh, the Virginia Tech team over the last two years was 15 and 11. So they are not the top 10 to 15 program that they were for the bulk of the 2000s when Al Groh was going up against Virginia. So Mike London, the cupboard may have been somewhat bare and he's recruited rather well since taking over for Al Groh, but the results are not anywhere close to what Al Groh was producing. And Virginia fans were not real pleased with Al Groh's last five years in Charlottesville. And of course, George Welsh was the guy back uh, in the mid-80s who resurrected this football program. And if you go back to 1987 and take it all the way through Welsh's years, going up to uh, Al Groh's uh, arrival in 2001, this program basically averaged an 8-4 and four season. Eight wins per season uh, back when they were playing 11-game schedules and going to bowl games every year and going to decent bowl games. Again, not great bowl games. Uh, you would expect that this program should stay on the level of uh, North Carolina State, when they were going to bowl games and winning eight and nine games per year. Maryland, when they were in the ACC. North Carolina. Schools like that. Uh, there should be no reason with the talent in the state of Virginia and in Maryland, in the D.C. area, New Jersey, and going down into the Carolinas, that a good coach, a really good coach who can recruit talent and relate to kids, bring them in, and then develop them, can't win more so than certainly Al Groh did in his last five years, or Mike London by far in those five years. So the performance is not up to the level of Virginia standards from George Welsh's time there, nor what the resources and the recruiting base say that uh, could be accomplished there in Charlottesville. Uh, if we look at the recruiting classes right now, but between um, Composite 24-7 and ESPN, you're looking at a class that should be coming in around uh, 35 or 40 in the country. That should be enough to compete in the Coastal Division in the ACC for championships. Uh, 2014, it was a top 25 class according to ESPN, number 41 according to Composite 24-7. Uh, the classes, if you go through the Mike London years from 2011 on, have been in the high 20s to low 30s. A uh, uh, number 25 class, 27, 28, and 34. So he's recruited rather well. If you compare those classes to their main competition in the ACC, in the Coastal Division, Georgia Tech, Pitt, Syracuse. Well, Syracuse is in the other division. Pitt, Duke, those types of schools, North Carolina, Virginia's recruiting classes They've been pretty substantial. Now we're talking about five recruiting classes under London. These teams should have been developed much better than 2-10 last season 
or this team. They could go 5-7 and seven or 6-6 six and six this season. Okay, if we look at the schedule coming up next year. Um, I reviewed the schedule coming into 2014. It didn't look too good for Virginia at that point. Coming off 2-10 and 10 and looking at a non-conference schedule that included a trip to BYU, a visit from UCLA, and having to play Florida State and Louisville, uh, two of the three best programs in the other division. So that's key in the ACC because if you play in the Coastal Division, wow, you can put a blanket over those programs. Duke, Pitt, Georgia Tech, Miami, Virginia, Virginia Tech, North Carolina. They're all capable of winning that division. They're all capable of finishing last in that division. Those are very comparable programs. In the other division, Florida State rules. Clemson's on the next tier. Louisville probably on a separate tier. Then you've got everybody else with Wake Forest bringing up the rear. But in the Coastal Division, Duke won it last year. Uh, Georgia Tech's gone to the ACC Championship game. Virginia Tech, they have fallen off their perch of dominating that Coastal Division no more. So that can be won. So what is key here is who you play in the other division. Because you could, you could get lucky that year and the round robin comes up Wake Forest and Syracuse or North Carolina State. Uh, for Virginia this past year, again, it was Louisville and it was Florida State. A tough bye and they defeated the Cardinals. Maybe the best win of the season, a top 25 team. Um, so next year, who do they have? They've got Syracuse, very winnable. And they've got Louisville again. This time they've got to go on the road at Louisville. So let's say they split there. Then again, within that division, the other six games, they need to go four and two. If they want to make a run at a better bowl game and make a charge at a championship, at least within the division, getting to the ACC championship game, something Duke pulled off last year at five and three in the conference. Virginia wins four of six in the division. Then they split against Louisville, most likely losing that game and Syracuse. Non-conference. This is, again, one of the tougher non-conference schedules in the country. You know, teams like Alabama should be playing this schedule instead of the teams that they play. Aside from the William and Mary game, which we can excuse, of course, they're a, they're a regional foe, go out to Los Angeles and take on UCLA, and the Bruins will be loaded again next year. Notre Dame, that game at home, and Boise State at home. Boise State, of course, out of the Mountain West, 6-1 and one right now. Uh, in their conference and playing for a conference championship. Notre Dame is uh, falling on hard times late this season, but Notre Dame under Brian Kelly is recruited well in the top 15, and Notre Dame is going to be very difficult to win in South Bend. So let's say they go 2-2 two and two against the non-conference slate, and they can somehow finish 5-3 and three and maybe roll the dice, make their way to an ACC championship game next year. The, on, the, on the positive side here, Virginia fans, you see the defensive play this year. Starting with game one against UCLA, when the offense gave it away and the defense completely confused Brett Huntley and company and held down the Bruins. And that's been pretty much the case all season. If you look at just the game log and look at the scoring outputs of the opponents, Virginia's played extremely well on defense and when they've given up points, i.e. BYU and Georgia Tech, 41 and 35, it's come from the help of the offense turning the ball over and going three and out. John Tenuta, the defensive coordinator, has done a fine job. He's got a five-year contract right now. You would expect that he would stick around. Maybe not necessarily the offensive coordinator, Steve Fairchild, or associate head coach, Tom O'Brien. 34 seniors on this Virginia team. So does that bode well? since they haven't been that successful, or since they started to get some mojo this season and win some games against some decent teams, i.e. Louisville, and play much better within the ACC, uh, they're going to have to play some younger players next season. Again, 34 seniors on this particular team. The defense, again, gave up 24 points per game, and that's against a very, very strong schedule outside of the ACC in particular, and also they had to take on Florida State. They had to take on, again, Louisville in the other division. They need to find somebody who can come in and develop a quarterback. Grayson Lambert was the 37th rated quarterback uh, in his recruiting class. Now, if you go through the recruiting rankings of quarterbacks, you can find guys that flop above 37 and guys lower than 37 who have become stars. 
Johnny Manziel was a roughly the 40th rated quarterback in his particular class. There are tons of examples like that. So Virginia fans, let me know how you feel about uh, Grayson Lambert and Matt Johns. They're both sophomores in 2014. Statistically, Johns has had the better season, although in limited duty at 55%, eight touchdowns, five picks, taking care of the football a little, a little bit better than Grayson Lambert at 61%, nine touchdowns, 10 interceptions. And of course, he's not a running threat at all. He gives you nothing there. What has happened to Corwin uh, Cutler and Brendan Marshall, who were fairly highly rated quarterbacks in that 2013 class? So Mike London, if I were running the show, would not have been retained. I believe that money was a factor in buying out that contract plus the buyout at close to $6 million. As it is, they've got a leg to stand up on in defending their decision because the football team is much improved over 2-10 and 10 last season in going a legit 5-6 and six against a difficult schedule with a very improved defense. Develop the quarterback, and they've got to develop this team overall with the type of recruiting classes that they have coming in. No, they're not going to compete for national championships, but top 25 to 35 recruiting classes should equal seven or eight wins in the ACC. And in that coastal division against the likes of North Carolina, Duke, Virginia Tech, and so forth, Miami, they should be able to vie for division championships. All right, uh, Virginia Cavalier fans, would love to hear what you have to say about Mike London's tenure at Virginia, the decision to retain him at least one more year, and Virginia football for 2015 right here on Mark Rogers TV.